I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Those who follow me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer from St. Giles Anglican in Estevan. And we begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is on Treaty 4 territory. The original lands of the Cree Ojibwe, Soto, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, and the homeland of the Métis people. Just a quick announcement this morning. Um, church will be open, St. Giles will be open for in-person worship beginning on February the 20th. That's Sunday, February 20th. We will have an 8 a.m. service and our regular 10 a.m. service. Guidelines following masking and wearing masks appropriately, as well as safe distancing will be in effect. So if you feel like that you like to stay home, be welcome and be at peace because God is with you there. But if you would like to attend, please do. Open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is our light and our life. O come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, 
and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull, and stop their ears and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds, and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate. Until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remains in it, it will be burned again like a turban or an oak, whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, to which also you are being saved, if you hurled firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the words of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, 
put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Fishing is a noble occupation. For some, it is a sometimes dangerous livelihood. As some of you may know, I spent two and a half years living and working on the Ile de Madeleine in Quebec. The islands are in the middle of the Gulf of St. Lawrence, and the main source of employment is fishing. We worked among the fishermen and women, and I learned quite a lot about the dangers of fishing, the winds and the rough seas. Most of the families in our congregations had lost someone at sea, fathers, sons, uncles, grandfathers, through accident or drowning while fishing. I gained a huge respect for the dangers of the sea, partly through my own experiences of traveling on fishing boats and ferries in rough seas and high winds, but a huge respect for fishermen and women who work long hours in sometimes really dangerous situations. Fishing for a living is akin to ranching or logging, working close to nature and the environment. I have always felt that the main reason to work in those industries was because you love it. God's creation is powerful, unpredictable, romantic, and by turns impractical. And while it pays wonderfully, well, sometimes it pays wonderfully, other times not so much. Jesus comes up the beach where the fishermen were. They were home to harbor, as our guys used to say. There was all the cleanup and mending of nets to do after one of those nights when there's Jesus standing there with a crowd of his followers behind him, and he climbs into Simon Peter's boat. Now, on the islands, we used to have to ask permission to board, but Jesus doesn't seem to ask, and he just gets on the boat. God is like that sometimes doesn't actually ask permission to enter our lives either, just gets on board, doesn't ask our permission to get involved in our life, to encounter us with grace. God just goes ahead and does it. Jesus asked Simon to take him out a bit. I imagine this was to get away from the crowd a little, to be able to be seen and heard, to teach. And so Simon did. Simon, after a night of fishing, in the midst of repairs to his nets, tired and perhaps a bit hungry, just wanting to get done and to get home, does as Jesus asked, takes out the boat a little ways from the shore. We don't really know why. Maybe Simon just knew that Jesus did this sort of thing, or maybe he's so grateful that Jesus healed his mother-in-law that there's not much he wouldn't do for Jesus. Or maybe he's just that kind of a guy, the guy who would push out from shore even though he was dead tired after working all night, just because you asked. He just does it. I know one or two of this kind of person, and you probably do too. So Jesus speaks, teaches from the boat, and when he's done, he says, Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Jesus isn't all done, because God's like that. There's always more. And I have to tell you that my answer would have been, seriously, Jesus? And Simon comes close as he protests, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. See, here's the thing. They fished all night because when it was so hot during the days, the fish went deep and they came closer to the surface within the reach of the nets in the cool of the night. So they fished at night, and now Jesus is asking them to go and put down their nets again. It doesn't really make any sense. This rabbi is a religious teacher, a carpenter's son, 
And now he's meddling in the fishing business. And Peter again does something that doesn't make sense, letting down his nets after he'd been fishing all night and caught nothing. But this time, they caught so much that the nets were beginning to break and they needed to call on their partners from the other boat to come and help them bring in the catch. They caught so much that both boats began to sink. That's crazy abundance, so much more than they could possibly expect. Can you imagine the amazement of those fishermen? Imagine their disbelief and their joy at the abundance, the awe. Pretty much nothing had changed in what they did this time around for what, and what they had done all night. No new nets or special spot on the lake, no new bait or gimmick. Nothing different except that Jesus spoke to them and they did what he said. The word Jesus spoke made it different because God's word always does what it says, even when we who hear that word fall short or even have a hard time believing it. Have you ever been in that place? Have you ever encountered Jesus the Christ in the way that Simon and these guys did? Have you ever experienced unimaginable abundance and blessing in the weirdest and most wonderful place and way? And when you realize the encounter was so much more than what you expected, you wondered at your unbelief. However much Peter thinks he knows about Jesus, he only now realizes that he doesn't really know him, that he's only just beginning to realize who and what Jesus is. And it scares him a little. It scares him and it probably weakens his knees so that he drops to the ground. I don't know about you, but just when I think I'm begin to think that I've come to some sort of understanding and knowing who God is, I am astounded at what I do not understand and what I do not know. I remember once saying to Professor Hannum, our professor of theology, that with as much as we can study or come to know about God, when I am no longer so amazed by God's grace that it does not drop me to my knees, I know that I am in crisis. David Lowe says this, when we experience sheer grace, we are simultaneously joyful and a little afraid, struck by how much more we've received than we deserve or even imagined, wondering how such blessings came our way and realizing we are caught up in something so much bigger than ourselves. Simon Peter, his crew, James and John, were all astounded by the catch that was taken and Simon Peter's on his knees, and Jesus says, Do not be afraid. Be not afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. And they brought their boats to shore, left everything, and followed him. Comfort, encouragement, and then call. God, as you perhaps know, calls the unlikeliest of characters throughout the gospel. And God continues to call those whom we may consider the least likely. This is how God works, always choosing the unlikeliest of characters through whom to work, putting aside all their doubts and fears and excuses and profound professed shortcomings to do marvelous things through them. After these words, this call, the fishermen gave up everything their professions, their livelihood, their family and friends, everything in order to follow Jesus. This call is also meant for you and me. We are also asked to follow Jesus, putting aside all our doubts and fears and excuses and professed shortcomings so that God may do marvelous things through us. Jesus is still coming to us and speaking to us and calls us to things that we can't imagine. Jesus isn't finished calling us, us who know all too well our own sins and doubts and fears and inadequacies firsthand. But it seems that God doesn't care about our resumes, even more he did than, any more than he cared about the qualifications of the first apostles. Jesus is still coming and speaking to us. And by his speaking into our lives, Jesus can accomplish in us and through us amazing and magnificent things. Because that's what Jesus, the Word of God, does. Always. And thanks be to God for that. Amen.
let us affirm our faith in the words of Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. During this time of pandemic, when we cannot physically put our offerings on the plate, we ask that you continue to give your offering by mail, e-transfer, or pre-authorized deposits through your bank. And further information is available on our website. For the gifts and offerings we receive, we give thanks and pray. God of compassion and forgiveness, receive our offering this day and make us one with him who is our peace, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The response to the bidding, Lord, as you have called us, is make us worthy of our calling. Holy God, open our ears to your call, our eyes to your presence, our hearts to your love. Give us the courage to say, here I am, Lord, send me. Strengthen our faith that we may be willing at all times to heed your call. We pray for all who are called to proclaim your glory, all who seek out the lost, uplift the fallen, and comfort the wounded. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially for our clergy and churches, for Linda, our primate, Mark, our national Indigenous Anglican Archbishop, Greg, our Metropolitan, Helen, our Bishop, Mike, our Dean, Wilma, our Archdeacon, Brian, our Honorary Assistant. For all retired clergy in our diocese, for the Right Reverend John Watton, Bishop, and the people and clergy of the Diocese of Central Newfoundland, for the Dean, Council, and Congregations of the Two Rivers, Myth Valley, and Niagara area of the Eastern Synod, for the Congregation of Trinity Lutheran Church, for the Church of Ireland, our companion diocese of Litchfield and Meinga, for our ecumenical partners in the Lutheran, Anglican, Ukrainian Catholic, Roman Catholic Covenant. We pray for the outreach of the church to which we belong. Lord, as you have called us, make us worthy of our calling. God, as you are gracious to us, make us sensitive to the needs of others. We remember before you the world's poor, nations that are in debt, hungry and homeless peoples. We pray for all who work for relief organizations and for the emergency services, for all who give their lives in the care and service of others. For Dustin Hall and the staff of Hall's funeral service in the midst of this pandemic, Lord, as you have called us, make us worthy of our calling. We give you thanks for all who have encouraged us and built up our confidence. We pray for the young that they may not be discouraged. We pray for all families that are in difficulty at this time. We give thanks for our homes and all that you have called us to do. We remember our St. Charles family, especially Barb and Brian Wright and their daughters Sarah and Megan, Robert and Vivian Adams and their son Todd and his family. Lord, as you have called us, make us worthy of our calling. Lord of all compassion, we pray for those who have lost hope or vision. We pray for those who are fearful. We remember all whose lives are restricted by illness or circumstance. We pray for friends and family who are ill, especially Bert, Gail, Gwen, Joey, Lyle, Robert, Terry, the Porter family, Robert Adams, Kathy and Dwight Beard, Gail Brandon, Jody Bryant, Mackenzie Delaney, Aaron Ducart, Frank Helberg, Wanda Fries, Dorothy Gates, Dave Genter, Bob Haynes, Glory Haynes, Alan Hodges, Craig Hollins, Debbie Hubick, Brian Joseph, B. Lukey, David McDonald, Michaela McPherson, Friday McBooker, Leanne McCarthy, Dorian McGillis, Marge Miller, Arnold Newton, Dale and Walter Purvis, Julie Ricks, Les Saxon, Kim Smith, Candy Smythe, 
Wanda Stang, Derek Trapold, Lisa Vandeveld, Edna Walliser, Tom Wright, and Mavis Zinovich, and those we named silently before you now. Lord, as you have called us, make us worthy of our calling. Lord, you call us to share with you in the glory of your eternal kingdom. Make us worthy of your calling. We remember all who have served you faithfully and are now in life eternal, especially Charles Carroll, Emily Franklin, Avery Eagles, Marjorie Honan, Greta Faber, Connie Cowan, Jocelyn Provost, Barbara Craven. Lord, as you have called us, make us worthy of our calling. Grant, O gracious God, that we may not only hear your word, but understand it and receive it into our hearts, that we not only receive it, but reveal it in our lives by living up to our calling and to your praise and glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. O Lord our God, we pray for Elizabeth our Queen on her Platinum Jubilee. We give thanks for her 70 years of service to the well-being of the peoples throughout the Commonwealth. As we celebrate her earthly reign, may we so follow her example of faith and self-giving that we come to know the fullness of your glory in your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And now gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us praise our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen. And we will see you again next week. Be the glory, risen, conquering sun.